All right, so let's uh, recognize which atoms here are reduced or oxidized. And the first thing we want to do is pull up our rules so that we know how to assign the correct oxidation numbers. So here they are, now we're ready to go. Let's look at this nitrogen atom here in the first reaction. According to our rules, we can assign an oxidation number of zero. On the right side of this reaction, we can sign an oxidation number of minus three. So when we consider what oxidation is, oxidation is the loss of negatively charged electrons and reduction is defined as the gain of negatively charged electrons we can guess what happened to this nitrogen atom. If the oxidation of this oxidation number of this nitrogen atom became more negative, well, that gives me a hint that this nitrogen atom was probably reduced. Oxidation number helps us to keep track of electrons. So if the oxidation number here drops and becomes more negative, that's because the nitrogen atom gained negative electrons in this reaction. So it was reduced. In reaction two, they're asking us to look at chromium uh, atoms. So here we have an ion. So when we're assigning oxidation number, we have to be careful and pay attention to this rule here. The algebraic sum of the oxidation numbers must be equal to the overall charge for an ion. So what is the oxidation number for each one of these oxygen atoms? negative two. I have four of them for a total of negative eight. And so the oxidation number of this chromium atom must be plus six because the sum of all of the oxidation numbers of all of the atoms has to be equal to the charge of the ion. There are four oxygen atoms, each with an oxidation number of minus two, that's minus eight. This one chromium atom has an oxidation number of plus six, totals minus two. Let's go over here. What's the oxidation number of this chromium atom? Or these chromium atoms? Uh, I have oxygen again, negative two. There are seven for a total of negative 14. I need the sum of these to be positive 12 because positive 12 plus negative 14 is equal to the charge of this ion. So if I have two chromium atoms, what must be the oxidation number of each plus six? So that means that chromium was neither oxidized nor reduced. No electrons were lost or gained because the oxidation number remained the same. Here, I've got carbon in methane and the oxidation number is negative four. Over here, the oxidation number is negative four again. The oxidation number of each hydrogen atom here would be plus one and negative two for the oxygen atoms. Neither oxidized nor reduced. Here I have copper atoms. This is an ionic compound, cation and anion, copper ion, sulfate anion, I know that according to this guideline, the oxidation number is equal to the charge of the ion. This is copper 2 sulfate. According to the stock system, when I see this name, copper 2 sulfate, the Roman numeral 2 tells me the oxidation state of the metal cation. And so I know that the oxidation number for copper in this case is going to be plus 2. I know that the oxidation number of those oxygen atoms is minus two, so that's minus eight total, plus positive two would be minus six, so I can also guess that the oxidation number of that sulfur atom must be plus six. So let's look at copper over here. I have pure elemental copper, each atom in a free element, regardless of the number of atoms, if it's a pure element, then the oxidation number for each atom is zero. So in this case, the oxidation number of copper went from positive two became more negative zero. 
So that means that these copper atoms were reduced. The gain of negative electrons will bring the oxidation number down. Remember, oxidation number helps us to keep track of electrons, where they are going in the reaction. If these negative electrons are being picked up by these copper atoms, then the copper is being reduced and its oxidation number will decrease. So that would be our answer.